Hi, my name is Jo Maria Aquino, and I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about conceptual math, an approach that will help our students become critical thinkers in the classroom and beyond. While conceptual math has implications for how you teach, we want to be clear, it is not pedagogy. Rather, this approach gets to what is valued at the heart of mathematics, the core ideas and insights. These ideas and insights range from concepts like negative numbers and fractions, to insights and truths like the Pythagorean theorem to the fundamental principles of calculus. Procedures do help illustrate and prove the concepts, but what we are after as educators is the core ideas and concepts. To clarify, let's talk about what conceptual math is and is not. Conceptual math is concepts and ideas. It is not computation. It is a focus on reasoning and explaining mathematics. It is not procedures and mechanics. We are not exclusively solving the problem, but instead generating mathematical insights. The goal is not for scholars to be able to solve the same problem with different numbers. The goal is for scholars to be solving radically new problems with the same insights. Conceptual math is not knowing. Conceptual math is thinking. So how do we teach conceptual math? First, get clarity on mathematical concepts. You cannot teach if you are muddled about the core concepts. Identify, articulate, and reason about them. Have clarity on your pedagogic purpose. Teaching math is not only about computation, nor is it about only solving the problem. It is ultimately in service of getting students to think mathematically, which is conceptual. Have clarity on what success is. That means scholars reasoning and explaining mathematical concepts and unpacking mathematical questions and problems. Your job is to help them see and understand mathematical relationships. It is also your job to prevent shortcuts, such as kids going to the mechanics and abandoning thinking. It will be in the student work that you can see this level of attention and thinking. Success is when students can express their thinking mathematically. Provide clear feedback. Give students feedback on their thinking rather than just the answer. Often students get the answer wrong, because they have a lapse in their thinking and they do not invest in the problem. They rush to solve instead of doing the hard work of puzzling through and reasoning. Our job as educators is to train our students to think deliberately and carefully and apply their reasoning to their own work and thoughts. This is how your kids will become strong mathematicians. Finally, you must have conviction around thinking and reasoning. Your student outcomes will be better if you teach your students to think mathematically. Assessments strongly valorize synthesis and application of mathematical reasoning. They are not designed around computation or mastering procedures and mechanics. We do not just change the numbers, we change the questions and expect students to be able to perform flexibly. Success in all of this involves a scholar synthesizing ideas and then applying those ideas in new contexts. A key sign of mastery will be a scholar's explanation of the insight or concept and then their thinking beyond a single context or problem. Computation is not the end goal. Rather, it is a necessary and routine part of mathematical reasoning. Remember, conceptual math is an important part of our ambition to develop independent thinkers, giving our kids the tools they need to succeed in college and in life. It is after all why we're here. Once again, I'm Jo Maria Aquino, and it's been a pleasure to introduce this concept to you. Frick yeah! We did it, y'all! We did it! That was so hard! That's the hardest one. Holy crap. That was great. Thanks, girl. I needed that. <laughs> I love that that was great at this time.